Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Unboxing and Stuff. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Solid RF RV Super Cell Phone Booster. So first off, right out of the actual box the, that it came in, which was just cardboard, uh, this is what we get. We get a hard case that I'm sure is somewhat, you know, waterproof or water resistant, very similar to that of like a Pelican case or something like that. So right off the bat, it gets cool points. if. If nothing else works, at least it comes in a cool package, but I don't think that's going to be an issue here. So, let's go ahead and get into the unboxing here. So, got nice foam padding in here. First thing we'll see here is our user manual. Uh, tells you how it works, a little bit of an overview, how you should set it up in your RV or trailer, and uh, shows you some of the components and uh, how to test and see how if everything's working. So, pretty nice little manual looks like. We have a cigarette lighter plug power set up here, uh, which would allow you to put power pretty much anywhere. I'm not sure exactly how long this cable is yet, but uh, it would give you a pretty wide variety of locations to power the unit. We have the actual booster itself here which uh, works on five bands, 700, 800, 1900, 1700, slash 2100 megahertz. So it gets you a very wide variety of towers and, and uh, companies it'll work for. Let's see, we got right here. It's like, you can take the foam out to, to as you just or unbox things here. And so right here, we have a kind of big scale, uh, looks like you could be permanent mount it, has a spring so that way if it ever hits something uh, on your RV it's not going to get uh, you know torn off necessarily, uh, although it may. And then we have a cable for the actual antenna, uh, and this is an omnidirectional antenna so it's going to work no matter which direction the uh, towers are from you, this will go in every direction. So, so there's that. Pull out the next layer of foam here. So we have here a 12 volt cigarette lighter plug power adapter, which would make sense as to why we have this. We have one, two extra lengths of cable, which that's very nice, uh, you know, depending on how long or how far away your outside antenna is from your inside antenna, this would come in handy. Um, also potentially could be used with the inside antenna, we'll see if needed. Here we have an AC plug adapter, so if you were going to be in an RV park and didn't want to be pulling off your 12 volt, uh, then you could use this guy here. We have a sticky mount indoor antenna for the unit, which will be at your actual boosted signal coming into your RV or trailer and then uh, also take your signal back out to push it back out the, uh, the external antenna. Here we have it appears to be a another an outdoor antenna. This one however is a mag mount so that's kinda cool if you had a, a specific need for something smaller or if you uh, wanted to use this in multiple applications use that guy. Then after that we have see it looks like three mounting plates which you could probably either use for different locations or maybe they can work together to make a uh, solid uh, tri-mount. And then we have a bag full of miscellaneous hardware we have a, a bolt and a washer that looks like it'll fit on the thread on the bottom of this antenna here uh, we have some screws and uh, angled mounting bracket and then here we have some sticky uh, zip tie holders so you could stick them up underneath something and then put a zip tie to lock your cables in so that's that's nice and uh, looks like we've got some some clips to hold cables some clear ones and some clear sticky clips and some small zip ties and then that is it so that's everything in this kit. Now a kit like this would uh, 
on most cases, everybody else that I've seen would pretty much take this and they would perhaps mount this somehow or another to the ladder on the back of their trailer or their RV or something like that. Uh, you know, they could put it up and down when they're parked or they could actually just leave it up there. That's a nice solid mounting platform. Um, however, for my trailer, I actually did not have a ladder on the back. I've got a big window in the back and so they didn't put a ladder there. So, you know, there's there's a problem. I didn't really want to permanently mount this antenna to the roof, although it could be done and sealed. Uh, you just want to make sure you do it properly so you're not going to be introducing water or anything like that into your RV. So I came up with this idea. The first part of my idea here was this. This is just a paint pole that can extend up to 12 feet. And if you look here, you've got two locking points. So you got your first section, and then you got a second section, which 12 feet gets this, the pole and potentially this antenna, which is how I'm planning on trying to mount this, up above the roof line of my RV. Plus, I could go even further, uh, you know, as this goes several feet above the roof of my RV. So once I came up with this idea for a, um, a mounting pole, it, this is obviously not something that you'd permanently want out on the side of your trailer or whatever. Uh, this is only for when you're not, you know, driving. Uh, in this particular setup, if you mounted it directly to something like the roof or the ladder, that'd be a different story. But in my case, uh, I'm going with something more temporary. So I came up with this guy, but then my second problem was, okay, well, how am I going to, how am I going to mount this pole? to my trailer. Uh, I figured there's the back bumper I can mount stuff to, a spare tire, or there's the you know front frame that comes together. So, while wandering through the hardware store, I came up with this idea. So this is just some zinc plated square tubing that has holes in it. Uh, I don't know, probably an inch apart or so. Uh, so I started out with a 36 inch piece of this and I bought a 36 inch piece of 5 16 all thread and then on the back so this would go inside the frame here I put nuts with the nylon lock washers in them uh, so that way I don't ever have to worry about these and then on the front here I used some clamps like you would use to clamp a uh, broom or something like that into a closet and I spaced them apart so I will mount this to the frame and then I put regular nuts and washers on the front here and then bolted these guys in as well. Uh, this way I can take this on and off as as needed from the outside without having to worry about the, the back side, the inner side there. Um, and so I pretty much cut these down to an exact length and then I'll mount this on there and then I'll be able to actually clip this pole right in place and then it's going to securely hold it in place while I'm using it and then it just makes it easy for me to get on and off while I'm at the campground and uh, easy to pack up hopefully and uh, easy to set up so there's that idea and so then well we run into the issue of how how are we going to connect this to here I mean this both of these are, are male threaded you know I thought well maybe I could like zip tie it or bolt it and you know, that'd be kind of sketchy. So, I came up with this when I was wandering through the store. And what this is, is a adapter for a pole like this. And it's made for paint brushes. So you could put this on here, then you slide a paintbrush in here and you can get up into the corner. Well, my idea is to feed this cable and this antenna through this here and then I can secure this screw up against the spring here and that's going to lock this right in place then I can hoist it up and then I'll probably use some sort of a zip tie or velcro on the pole to keep my antenna cable from whacking all over the place just blowing in the wind so I have not actually attempted to put any of this on the trailer yet uh, that's going to be the next step here I think it's going to work out really well. The system works really well in my pickup truck, so I'm very excited to 
uh, try it and put this in the RV and then take it out and test it and see how it does. So one other thing I did want to note is that uh, with the design of this system, I thought this was kind of cool, but since it comes with this secondary external antenna, if you're going to primarily use this large antenna, uh, you could potentially mount this antenna, this mag mount, onto your vehicle, then all you would need is to purchase a secondary interior antenna. And if you're running off of 12 volts only, another 12 volt adapter. And then if you mounted this unit in a non-permanent way, then you could shift this back and forth between your truck while you're pulling your fifth wheel or your RV and the actual RV itself when you're set up. So just something I wanted to throw out there. I thought that was kind of neat that you could, uh, with a, just a little bit of alteration and additional parts, make this system work in multiple ways. So let's go ahead and get out to the trailer and start the install. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and mount the bracket by hand. And I'm just going to get everything finger tight. And then I'm going to go grab some tools. And now I'm going to use this angle to go ahead and get everything level and square. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my ratchets to tighten up the two bolts. And uh, then after that, it should be good. Okay, now I'm going to run the antenna cable for the antenna through the bracket, which goes on the end of my pole here. And then I'm going to go ahead and tighten that bracket up locking the antenna into place. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put that onto the pole, which just threads right into the bottom of that. And that uh, mount is actually pretty secure for the antenna. I was pretty impressed with the rigidity. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the pole into the bracket and then give it a quick shake, look at it moving around a little bit, but it's very secure. It was not able to blow off even during the wind. And then here I'm just using some Velcro, which is resettable to go ahead and lock that antenna cable into the pole, which keeps everything dressed nicely and keeps the cable from flapping around in the wind or anything like that. Uh, this setup, I had no issues. Uh, forgive the brightness up here. I had kind of turned it down even with the filter. It was still a little too bright, but there's it on the outside. And then the first thing I'm going to do on the inside is right underneath the bed. I'm going to go ahead and mount the booster with a Velcro backing so I can also move it if I want to in the future. And then I'm going to go ahead and screw in and mount the 12 volt plug adapter right there to the side rail next to the unit. And then I'm going to plug in the first extension cable for the antenna, for the exterior antenna. And then that there's a hole that I pre-drilled, which I'm going to pass the cables through into the pass-through compartment on the front of the trailer. And then I actually have to put in the antenna cable first, followed by the DC cable. and then just pull it all through. And it gets a little bound up every once in a while. You have to go back and forth, but it's not a big deal. And then just work it all the way through until I get the length that I want. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take one of the sticky backed Velcro holders and I'm gonna go ahead and mount that and then I'm going to take a zip tie and run that through there and just tie those two cables together. That way they're secure and they're not going to move in and out. And then finally go ahead and plug in the 12 volt plug to the unit and to the socket there. There's still no power at this time. Then I drill a hole to pass the inside antenna through to the front side of the bed here where with that location, it's far enough away from the external antenna that it'll still work quite well, but then it'll provide signal for the entirety of the trailer. And I'm just using a little alcohol to clean off 
any oil so that the inside antenna will stick very well. And you just peel off the 3M backing, which is a little bit tricky to do actually. But once you get it, put it in place and then you just hold it firmly for a, about at least a minute or so just to make sure that it's not going to come off. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug the inside antenna in and screw it tight so that way it will not come out. And then I'm going to take a zip tie and then just bundle up the cable and zip tie it so that it's clean and out of the way. And that pretty much wraps everything up for the inside here. So next I'm going to go ahead and pass the antenna cable down through a hole that I pre-drilled in the floor to go underneath the trailer. And then I'm going to pull it from underneath just to get it close to where it needs to be. And then do the same thing with the DC cabling. Feed it through, pull it, and then I had to reset it and re-untangle it slightly a few times just to get things to work out well. And then just feed them nice and tight through there. And then you can see this is minimally evasive to the compartment. And then I go ahead and connect the second extension on the antenna cable underneath here. And then I just have a small wrench, which I'm just putting just a slight tightness on that. And then I'm going to use zip ties in these three slots underneath to pass the cables across the trailer. Uh, because the port that goes up to the front with all the other cables is on the driver side. And this will keep it tucked up nice and out of the way. And then I'm going to wrap it around the existing cables just to hold it in place. And then I'm going to do the most important part under here right now, which is going to be taking electrical tape and wrapping it securely around this connection. This is one connection that is out in the open in the where it can get wet and all sorts of stuff. So you really want to make sure you seal this up well so it doesn't come apart and it doesn't get any water in there, which will affect your signal and performance. And then I just continue to route these cables along here. I do one more loop around the existing cables and then I go ahead and pass them through the hole at the front of the trailer. And then I just use some zip ties to lock them up in, up front. Here you can see I did some barrel connectors on the cable. And then I used a old uh, set of alligator clips with an inline fuse. Uh, because this did not come with an inline fuse. And I didn't have a connection. And then here you can see the antenna cable on the pole. So one other thing here that I wanted to point out is that I didn't for actually film this part, but I used silicone to seal up the hole where the two cables come out of that pass through under the trailer there. And this is very important to keep critters and water from getting up into your trailer. So do not forget this step. So the install is complete. Let's go ahead and move on and do some testing. Okay, so here we are. We're out at the lake. We're going to try the speed test and see if it works. This is with no, no uh, booster hooked up. So you can see we got 3G. I think you can see that. We got three bars. And it's trying. All right. Here, oh, here we're going. We're going. Finally. There we go. Wow. All right, so there it is. 0 0.08 megabits per second upload with a 0.42 megabit per second download. So now let's plug in the booster here in the trailer and see how that does. Okay, so now that we have the booster on, went from three bars to four bars. We're gonna just try and go again. See if it'll go a little bit better this time. Keep in mind where I'm at, this service that I'm on, the US Cellular is kind of throttled back a little bit. Um, it's a Verizon area. They don't play too nicely. So, 
but you can see it's I mean it's making a big difference regardless the download side looks like it's capped probably at 0.5 but the upload side that's a pretty significant swing from what 0 0.08 I believe um, all the way up to 0 0.32 megabytes per second so I mean it's not it's not a bad thing I mean it's it's not bad at all um, I may do one more test when I get home just to uh, see what it's like when it's in town I'm sure it'll be uh, a nice boost there as well so here's the out at the lake test we do see improvement guaranteed so that's good so so far so good okay so here we are we're back in town and we're gonna try a speed test here with the booster off as you can see we have 4G with three bars currently and we'll see what we can get keep in mind this is inside the trailer here in town Okay. Well, there's without the booster on. Uh, I have to imagine that just being in the metal box, basically, the trailer is uh, causing enough interference that it's just really not working well. So let me go ahead and pop over to uh, the bed up in the front here. You can see the bed. And uh, I'll uh, lift that up, get the booster plugged in and going, and then we'll test again. Okay, so now we got the booster plugged in, and we're not seeing a difference in bars, but let's go ahead and try it again and see what happens. Alright, so then if we go back over here to results. We can kind of compare and see the results from the very first test down here is uh, with no booster out while we were camping 0.42 megabits download with 0 0.08 megabits upload second test was with the booster which gives us the 0.49 megabits download which i think is capped up there at the lake uh, and 0 0.32 megabits per second upload which you know that's that's 400 percent faster on the upload uh, than it was before and you know it's a little bit faster on the download so then we come here you know we get 1.89 megabits per second download with a 0 0.01 megabits per second upload which that means you really can't upload anything at all and then we go all the way up to 2.89 megabits per second download which is a significant increase and then we have 2.81 megabits per second upload so it makes upload go from not being able to upload anything to about the same speed as it can be downloading which is a pretty massive improvement I mean, it speaks for itself just inside this metal box it's just not made for you know sending signals in and out so anyways I'm gonna reposition the camera and we'll do a final thoughts on this cell booster and we'll close up the video Okay, so final thoughts on the Solid RF RV Super kit. I have to say, for the most part, it's great. There's nothing that I can fault about uh, the kit overall. It does exactly what it says it's going to do uh, right out of the box. All you have to do is supply power and some good antenna connections and locations, and you're off and rolling. So, what would I like to see changed in the kit? If, if it was up to me and I could call the manufacturer and say hey you know what this is what I think you should add one I think I would add some sort of a fused uh, cable to add to the power remote kit for the DC part just so that way you're not running DC and risking that that's gonna short out because it got frayed somewhere you just have you know it's just good practice anything that you're running DC on it's a nice touch just to throw in a fuse of some sort that you can put in line uh, the other thing that I would like to see is possibly a ring terminal, just a simple connector uh, that you could actually put right onto a battery terminal. Uh, I didn't happen to have one, and it, I was going to go get one, but then it worked out perfect. I happened to have that alligator clamp set from a charger, 
So I was just able to use that for the time being until I picked those two parts up, in which case I'll do my final install on that. Now, one other thing, it's not necessary by any means, but I think it would be cool so that way you don't have to actually go in and plug in and unplug the 12 volt adapter, would be if they were able to include some sort of a uh, switch that you can mount nearby it just to turn it on and off. That, I don't know, if that's like way above and beyond, more than you need, but I just think it would be cool, that way you don't have to do that. Uh, other than that, I think the kit pretty much came with everything that you need. You know, I, I didn't find myself wanting for anything else. Uh, and I was actually very pleased with the way the install went. I wasn't quite sure how it was going to go until I actually got started. And uh, I think it went pretty smoothly overall. Um, there's really nothing that I'm unhappy with at this point. So I'm looking forward to continued use and going to other places that actually uh, have better service for the cell phones that I have and seeing what it can do when I actually have some better speeds instead of what you guys saw there is pretty slow even in town. I mean, that's, that's not great. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is. But I think that about wraps it up for this video, install and review. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. You know, if you did, please click the like button. And if there's something you didn't like about it, please let me know. Uh, I know there's a few portions that I thought were in focus and were out of focus or didn't quite have enough light. Uh, so in the future, I'm going to work a little bit harder to ensure that that doesn't happen. But uh, at this point, I'd just like to say thanks for watching. If you guys want, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot. And I've included a list down below of all the parts that I could find uh, that I use in this video on Amazon. That way, if you guys want to do something similar in your setup, you guys will have access to that. And then also the Solid RF kit will be down below. And you can just click on that link there if you guys would like to pick one up yourself. So I think that about wraps it up for today. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter if you guys do that stuff. But other than that, have a good day and we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks.